The two worst sexual experiences of my life had one very important thing in common, which was the inappropriate and poorly timed use of biting. Now, I love nibble, some teeth on the skin can feel really good. In fact, I personally enjoy being bit, but not out of the blue. So I'll, I'll tell you one of them, um, a man was giving me a massage and I think this was like our second date. Things are getting a little hot and heavy as he's giving me this massage. I'm laying down on the floor of my apartment, belly down with my back to him. He's rubbing my back. And then all of a sudden I feel his hands leave my body and the next thing I feel is his teeth on my butthole biting me. If you're scratching your head right now, you cannot imagine how I felt in this moment. It was like perfectly fine massage, going great, probably was going to get laid, and then chooses to bite me on my butthole. Which, like, by the way, I don't personally, I'm sure there's people, I don't want to yuck anybody's yum, but, like, butthole bites, not even in the middle of rooming, is bite hole butt <laughs> butthole biting, usually acceptable. So I don't know where this guy got this idea from. It didn't make any sense in the flow of the event. I immediately told, and by the way, I was wearing pants. So he bit me through my own clothing. Like, it was very weird. Anywho, I immediately kicked him out of my apartment, and I called my friends to tell them about the amazing... Uh, horrifying, horrific, hysterical thing I had just experienced. Because that's what we do, isn't that right ladies? We're gonna call our friends and talk to each other about how funny it was, the thing that made zero sense. I'm not proud of it, this was a different me. I don't kiss and tell anymore. That's not true, I totally kiss and tell you and several thousand other people. This video is all about the most common mistakes that men make in bed. So stay tuned because a couple of them are definitely going to surprise you. You might have made a couple of these mistakes. Perhaps you've been uh, uh, overly assertive with the use of your teeth. And if that's you, I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm just here to make the future better than the past has been, okay? The fundamental truth to understand here is that women are not going to tell you. I didn't tell that guy. I mean, I'm an exception to the rule. I'm pretty vocal and I will tell someone, especially if they've done something in bed that upset me or made me feel uncomfortable. But for the most part, women do not tell men when they've done something to make us feel uncomfortable. And for good reason. Because some men get violent, they can't hear that they've done something wrong, they go into shame, they get intense, they get dangerous. Like We have good reasons not to tell you when you've done something wrong. But hear me out. What women instead will do is keep going until it's over and then never call you again and then never explain why they never called you again. And then you're left wondering, am I bad in bed? What did I do? When you might have made just one of these really small, really fixable mistakes. And I'm going to tell you exactly how never to make those mistakes ever again, starting right now. The most common mistake that men make in bed is not talking to women about what they like before they hop into bed. It's super simple, it's deceptively simple. Talking about what she likes and doesn't like is almost the best way to avoid making dumb mistakes. For example, so hey, uh, would it be okay with you if I nibbled your body? Do you like getting bit in bed? Yeah, you do? Okay, if so, about how hard on a scale from one to 10 where 10 is like bruises, even breaking the skin, and one is like barely there. Okay, cool. So you like about a four, not too much pain, no bite marks. Got it. Okay, cool. Anywhere that you don't want me to bite. Uh, nipples. All right, super sensitive. Got that. Labia. Okay, really do not want to have a horrible experience in college. Cool. Don't want to be bit there. Okay, great. Now, you don't have to get to that level of granularity unless you want to be amazing in bed, in which case being that specific is really good. Or at least asking, hey, would it be okay if I? Are you open to? Can I surprise you with? Please. Feel free to tell me no if you decide you don't like that in the moment. Having a conversation about what both of you like is the key to having great sex. I used to fall trapped to this all the time. I used to think that like once the chemistry was started, you couldn't stop and have a conversation because it would ruin the moment, ruin the moment, right? But I realized all that thinking is based on the premise that we don't actually want to have sex and if we start talking about it or acknowledging the fact that we're having sex, then we might stop and not actually have sex, which is 
Holy mackerel, what backwards thinking that is. If you two have a conversation and one or both of you decides or realizes that you didn't want to have sex at all, good job. Split up, don't have sex. Like if you can't even talk about it, don't do it, okay? You need to be adult enough to recognize that sex is something that you have a conversation about. You would ask someone before you serve them dinner whether or not they had any food allergies or food preferences, right? You wouldn't put like level 10 spiciness the first time that you cook for somebody else because you don't know if they like spicy food. Sex is no different. Treat it the same way as cooking for someone else. Hey, uh, before you come over, do you, do you like having any anal play? Are you okay with salad tossing? Watch my previous video if you are because that will tell you exactly how to do it. Anywho, you get the picture. Have a conversation beforehand. Number one, best advice I could give you. Number two, doesn't ask for feedback thinks that he knows everything. Guys, you have been told that you need to know everything when it comes to sex. You are responsible. I've, I've probably led you to believe that you are somehow responsible to know everything when it comes to sex. You don't. No one does. I don't know everything that's possible when it comes to sex. I don't know all the amazing techniques out there. I know a lot of them and I put them together in an amazing course that I'm calling She Comes To that will be available for purchase soon. But even if you buy that course, even if you watch She Comes Too, even if you watch every single video on my channel, you'll still need to ask for feedback from the woman that you're with. Does she like it fast or slow? Does she like your tongue over here or over here? A millimeter of difference could be the difference for her between an orgasm and seven orgasms or no orgasms at all or pain and no orgasms at all. It's really important that you ask for feedback and that you're willing to hear it. You need to let her know, hey, I, I, I want to know if what we're doing is working for you, if you're enjoying it, and if there's ways that I could make it better, please tell me. And then when she does tell you, hear it, don't go into attack, well, why didn't you tell me? Or defense, or all the other girls I've ever been with like this, or withdrawal, oh, okay. <sighs> hear the feedback, gracefully respond, and change what you're doing. This is how we all get great at sex. Like We need feedback on everything, it's the way you got good at math and writing and table manners and making dinner. You know, you did a good job with this chicken, but it's a little dry. Maybe next time, cover it with tin foil. Like it's, sex, is not, sex is actually not different at all than anything else. We just treat it as different. So we think that we need to know everything about sex, but we're okay that we buy cookbooks and stuff to teach us how to cook. Ask for feedback, receive feedback gracefully. Number three thing that makes men bad in bed is that they don't take breaks or allow for stillness. Again, they have this idea that once we get started, we've got to like hammer and hammer and <laughs> until we're both done and we're both totally exhausted and we pass out. I have found that the best sexual encounters for me personally and for the people that I work with in one-on-one -on -one coaching are the ones in which they take breaks. They savor the moment. They go get a glass of water. They decide to change locations or positions, change the music, change the lights, take breaks, breathe, look at each other a little bit, cuddle for a little bit. You can get back into the moment. Sex is not a hurry up and get through it kind of event. It's something that flows and has multiple peaks. like. Peak movement, low stillness. Peak movement, low stillness. Which brings me to the other part of this point, stillness. A lot of men have the idea that once there's penetration, they have to go, 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 go. And what you're missing is all of the magic of being still and just keeping yourself in the same position, staying present and allowing her body to respond to that stillness. Women do really well in stillness. It gives us a chance to sort of like catch our breath, appreciate, get into the moment of pleasure and experience what's actually happening. And if you're just jackhammering away at us, we don't have the opportunity to just relax and enjoy for a moment. So stillness, pacing, a sexual encounter should have natural breaks. It should have peaks of excitement and low points where we're both uh, getting our getting a break we're just allowing ourselves to like take a little break and then the next high point is going to be even higher than the previous one because of the break that we just took 
Number four thing that makes men bad in bed is having crushing performance anxiety. This usually comes out in a couple different ways. Could be premature ejaculation, could be erectile dysfunction, could be being in their head and not very present in their body, could be forgetting to even breathe. I have seen it all. And if you are suffering from performance anxiety, especially if you have premature ejaculation, I made a whole course for that, my masterclass on PE called Come When You Want. I will link to that below. But whether you're performance anxiety is manifest in premature ejaculation or not, if you do have performance anxiety, then work on it. You can work on it with a coach or a therapist. You can use the same techniques that other people use to manage anxiety, general anxiety, to manage performance anxiety. And when in doubt, figure out what works for you to get out of your head and into your body. What triggers can you use to help you to stay here, even if it's like intense sensation, or even if it's pain, or even if it's just breathing? What do you need to do to remind yourself to be here down instead of here up when it comes to having sex? And for God's sakes, breathe, take deep breaths. You could even try it right now. Breathe from your belly. Deep exhale all the way out. Again, all the way down into the belly. Hold it at the top. Oh, that was good. Remembering to breathe is so crucial to staying present, having the ability to last, and being able to actually read what's going on in her body so you don't end up like making this next mistake. Mistake number five, does things without any apparent reason. So this is best exemplified by the stories that I told you at the beginning of this video. The guy that just used his teeth in the middle of the massage to touch an area of my body that he hadn't ever touched, it was out of order, it made no sense. Sex and the entire date, the evening, the seduction should follow a natural pattern or a natural rhythm. Don't jump forward or jump back. If you're touching her back with your hands, it doesn't make sense for you to suddenly put your mouth on her belly button, right? There's just no consistency there. Flow from one thing to another, allowing each event to naturally follow the event prior and lead to the next one. This is where I remind you not to listen to sex coaches who just have tips and tricks for you because as much as tips and tricks are great, if you are in an intimate moment with a woman and suddenly you're like, oh, what it, was that tip that Caitlin said? She said that I should try the, the licking thing? Okay, I'm just gonna go there. In a panic, you're just gonna try something that doesn't make any sense. It's gonna take you out of your body, put you up into your head, into your thinking brain. Use your intuition. Thankfully, you're a sexual creature. You are a sexual being. You don't need tips and tricks. What you need is to stay present with the woman that you're with and make sure that your actions have a natural course to them. And if you're not clear what that feels like, then just notice for yourself when something in your life feels sort of disjointed or it comes out of the blue, what that feels like for you. Notice how conversations, assignments, television shows, songs, they all sort of follow a rhythm. Think about that the next time that you are being intimate with a woman. This leads us to number six, going straight for the target. Okay, number one complaint that I hear from women about men is that they just go straight for the genitals. They finally get this woman into bed, like they're been making out, all of a sudden clothes are off, and then his hands and his fingers and his genitals are like just straight up on yours. Like he goes straight for the clit, just whoop, target, locked, proceed with full intensity. Cut it out, cut it out. Full body, start with the full body. Don't just zero in on the clit. You need to expand. There's a whole body, there's a whole lot of nerve endings there. And if you start on the clit before she's ready, you might not get to continue because you're gonna scare her poor little clit. It's gonna go hiding and she's not gonna be able to reach an orgasm. There's a whole module on that and she comes too, so I'm not gonna dive too much deeper into it here. But if you wanna learn more about it, check out the links below. Number seven, 
The mistake that guys make is thinking that all women are the same. So obviously if it worked with your last girlfriend, it's gonna work with the next one. If it worked with the first girl you had sex with, it's gonna work with the next girl you had sex with. We're all different, you've gotta get feedback, you've gotta understand that some women like a hot towel after sex and some people like to rub your body fluids all over them and let them dry off. There's no right or wrong way to do it, but you have to ask questions, you have to have a conversation beforehand that will let you know whether or not she wants that hot towel as soon as you're done. We're just not all the same. Please don't treat us like we're all the same. We all have different bodies and different preferences. Treating us like we're all the same is the best way to not only hurt our feelings, but also make for really mediocre sex. Number eight, doesn't care about his own pleasure. Gentlemen, when you put all of the focus on our orgasm, our pleasure, we appreciate it. We definitely want you to care a lot about our pleasure, but when you're so focused on it as if it's the only goal of sex, it kind of makes us feel weird. Like, why aren't you enjoying it? I'd like for you to enjoy it. Why are you silent over there? Why are you like calculating and analyzing me, trying to get the optimal orgasm out of me? Like, just enjoy it for yourself. Which brings me to tip number five, which is doesn't care about her pleasure. I've also, did I say five? Which leads me to tip number nine, which is overly focused on his own pleasure and not focused at all on her pleasure. There's plenty of guys out there that are just sort of selfish. They get in bed and all they can think about is getting their own rocks off. They want to get to orgasm or they want to have their own fun and they're not even paying attention to what the woman wants. There's no right or wrong. It's not 50-50. The shift changes. You might spend the first 30 minutes of seduction and sex focused on her pleasure and the last 30 focused more on yours. But it's never gonna be 100%, 100%. It's never 100% hers or 100% yours. You have to be able to do both, focus on both. And don't be a selfish lover, no one likes that. Even if you feel threatened, like you don't know exactly how to please this woman, again, moment to moment, adjust where you're focused and get your ego on out of there. Which brings me to number 10, things that make a man bad in bed. Number 10 is overly focused on your penis. I know, this is a shocker because why wouldn't you be focused on your penis? Listen, the more focused on your penis you are, the less focused you are on having great sex. If you come too soon, if you lose your erection, if you think your penis is too small, too big, too ugly, too circumcised, not circumcised enough, the bush, the not bush, the da, 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 da. your penis is part of sex, but it is not the whole thing. And if you're too focused on it, you put too much pressure on yourself, you put too much emphasis on it, you're taking away from the whole experience. Let's say you ejaculate too early. Well, you've got fingers and a mouth. Let's say you can't get an erection. Okay, cool, you'll get one in the future. But for right now, can you still have a pleasurable sexual experience? It surprises some men to know that you can have an orgasm, you can even ejaculate without having an erection. And no matter what size your penis is, you can have amazing sex. It is true that it is not about the size of your penis. If you really care about being a great lover and you want to be good in bed, don't focus too much on your penis because it takes away from the overall experience. Your penis is wonderful. We love your penis. We care about it. We want it to be everything that it wants to be, hard and big and full of stamina. And also, if it's not any of those things, okay, deal with it then. Don't make a big deal out of it. She won't make a big deal out of it, and if she does, Maybe she's not the most caring and compassionate person and maybe it's time for you to have a conversation with her about that. Why does she care so much about your penis? Does she think that your hardness or lack of hardness is because you're attracted to her, not attracted to her? Tell her that that's not the truth. Your penis functions independently of your attraction, of your arousal, even sometimes in totally independently of your wishes. And that's okay, that's totally normal. We put men in this awful position when we tell them their penises have to be big and hard and stamina and perfect and the right amount of circumcised and the right amount. There's no right penis. All penises are wonderful, okay? Can you just trust me on this one, please? If your penis is great, it's just not the only tool that you need to be great in bed. And having a great tool doesn't make you good in bed. You could have the biggest penis in the world be awful in bed. In fact, the biggest penis in the world probably is awful in bed. Um, mostly because, what do you even do? Like most women are not gonna be able to handle it. So that made me sad. Let's wrap on a happier note. The good news is that my new course on how to be an amazing lover is going to drop 
It's called She Comes Too, and it's all about being an amazing lover, giving multiple orgasms, understanding the way that women's bodies work, and knowing exactly how to please them no matter what. P-E, E-D, D-E, you name it. I'm here for you. I've got you covered. You asked and I answered. I am here to teach you how to be great in bed. That was always my promise and I'm delivering on it in a new way. So stay tuned. Uh, when it's released, I'll put the link. So check in the description to see if it has been released. And if it hasn't, there'll be a note about when it is going to be released. So ah, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Go out and be great in bed. Go forth and be better in bed.